We are in the middle of a, of a God Quest series. I say middle of. We're wrapping it up today. And, um, and with the God Quest series, it's as if we're on a journey. The signposts are there. And the signposts are there at moments where we could take different paths. And the signposts that we're looking at, each one we grapple with to consider which direction are we going to go. And the signpost that is the final signpost is this one. The path we follow on our journey determines our destination. I want to say it again. The path we follow on our journey determines our destination. Now, the way that the God Quest series is set up is this would be the Sunday where we would be considering, so what decision do we make about all the things that we've looked at? And it's kind of a review of the former uh, weeks. Therefore, I, as your pastor, am taking liberty, and I'm ending the God Quest different than the God Quest book. Are you ready? Because I feel like we've grappled with those issues. I feel like we've been at points of decision about each one of these major concepts. And of course, we talked about truth and whether truth could be known and what is truth. We talked about whether, uh, how, how did we get here? Uh, you know, how, were, uh, how did mankind come about? How did our earth and the universes we see it get here? Does God exist? We talked about those things. The Bible and the authority of the Bible. Jesus and his claims to be God himself and equal with God. These are all things that we've talked about in the past. Uh, today, I want to go a step further because I don't believe we could finish a God quest without grappling with some of the things I'm about to discuss. The early church in Acts chapter 1. The early church in Acts chapter 1, we see that Jesus is about to ascend to the Father. He has completed his earthly ministry. And at that moment, we see the disciples and those that are followers of Jesus Christ, and we see them gathered together. It's a time and a way of sorrow uh, that Jesus is leaving them. His physical presence is leaving them. But Jesus is giving them a promise. Now, I want to look at that today because I believe that it is a great way to finish our God Quest journey, as we've been looking at, you know, all of these major issues. One of the things that I see is that I see that those disciples and followers of Jesus Christ that day, number one, they believed that God existed. We talked about that, like I say, on this God Quest journey. Number two, they believed in the authority of Scripture. They had the Old Testament. They believed in the authority of Scripture, and we see that. We know that they believed in Jesus' claims. They stood there on that day believing that Jesus is indeed the Messiah, that he is one with God, equal with God. So they believed that. These are all a part of their God quest. They were on a God quest as well. But they took an extra step. And this extra step that they took is the step that I am presenting to you today. And I believe that outside of your salvation experience, this is the most important step you could ever make as a believer. The most vital decision that you can make is to lead a spirit-filled life. Amen. I want you to be experiential in your relationship with Jesus. What do I mean by that? We believe that Jesus made claims to be equal with God. Amen? We believe that. Right. So we know that Jesus said that he and the Father are one, that he is equal to God. Jesus forgave sins. A mere man does not forgive sins. Jesus found himself in a position of speaking on behalf of God. Why? Because he is God. He's one with God. So, so we believe that. But that could end up being something, as it is in so many churches across the land, that it's just an intellectual ascent. And we want to be like the churches across the land that are life-giving and filled with the Spirit. That's where the church ought to be in America and around the globe. So our journey today needs to, on this God quest, lead us to a place where we embrace the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to speak about that a little bit in detail to you today. There are over 50 times in the book of Acts alone... And remember the book of Acts. The book of Acts is the launching of the early church. And so we see miracles happening in the early church. How many would love to see miracles in your life, in your families, and I mean, in our world today, in our generation? We would love to see miracles. So what's the secret to miracles? Why were they seeing miracles in that day? And, and, and we see all of these miracles. We see many, many people being brought into the church. Many are being saved. 
The church is explosive and dynamic in what is happening. There's no sense of religion in it. I mean, people are coming to church and getting healed. People are coming to church certainly getting saved. People are coming to church and getting provision and breakthroughs and miracles going on. And that's what I want for our church. That's what I want for our generation. I want that for my life. I want that for your life. And so it'd be from the first chapter of Genesis all the way to the last chapter of Revelation, we see the Holy Spirit at work. And so knowing that and this interweaving theme of the Holy Spirit, God himself, all the way through the scriptures and knowing that Jesus is stating some things in the book of Luke and then into Acts, I want to look at those uh, right now and begin to see what what is uh, here because Jesus knew that those early disciples and those early followers would need the Holy Spirit in order to effectively bring others towards a God quest. And if we are on a God quest alone, what good is that? We need to bring others on a God quest. That's what the God quest series is all about in my estimation, is not simply to make a decision for myself and stop there, although that's vital. But to make a decision for myself, nowhere for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I know where we stand. I know what my convictions are. I know I will not only have a mental sense that I could debate it, yes, in an effective way, but beyond that, that I am experiencing God himself in relationship and that I am bringing others into that experience. That's what I want for you as well. Let's look at Luke, the 24th chapter in the 49th verse. The Bible says, this is Jesus speaking, I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. That's why we call the Holy Spirit the promised one. Jesus has promised that the Holy Spirit would come and literally clothe them from on high. Imagine if that promise was made to you. Well, it is. If Jesus were standing and looking in your eyes right now and right before you and holding your hands and just a a foot away from your face and speaking to you right now, he would tell you the Holy Spirit has come for you. You can be clothed with this spirit from on high. You can know that God walks with you and talks with you and listens to you and empowers you and fills you. You can know it. You can have this relationship that is so vital and so intimate, and you can walk in that power. Think of the opposite of that. Think of those who never walk with the Holy Spirit. Think of those who never know what it is to have that senior partnership in their lives, and therefore they go through life discouraged, and they stay discouraged. They go through life, and they don't believe for anything great because they only believe for what they can do in their own strength. Imagine living that way. I don't want to live that way. I want the Holy Spirit, this promised one, to clothe me as well. And I want this promised one to clothe you. In Joel, the second chapter, we see it in the Old Testament. Joel, the prophet, speaks forth something that will happen in the years to come. It will not be this way in his generation. But he says that there will come a day. He prophesies in Joel 2, 28, in the first part of the verse. I will pour out, this is God speaking through his prophet, I will pour out my spirit on all people, speaking of a day that would come when the Holy Spirit would be poured out upon all flesh. That's what we see on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. This is the fulfillment, it is stated by Peter, of, of what Joel the prophet said, that the Holy Spirit would come upon all flesh, those who would be willing to repent and receive Jesus as their Savior would know that they can have the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. 